I'd like to call to order the June 17th, 2014 of the Bowling Green Board of Commissioners. I invite you to stand if you'd like. Uh, we'll be having an invocation led by Commissioner Bill Waltrip, who will then lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking for your blessings and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Please help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that you would challenge each other, that we would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best that we can be. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Schaller, please call the roll. Commissioner Waltrip? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Commissioner Denning? Here. Commissioner Hill is absent. Mayor Wilkerson? Here. Uh, Mr. Febo, do we have any awards or recognition? I do not, but I'm, you might have some. Do we have any on the board? Hearing none, we'll uh, take your comments for tonight, please. Uh, there'll be a need for executive session. Uh, Kate will read the reason. Pursuant to KRS 62810C for discussions of proposed or pending litigation against or on behalf of the city. So moved. Second. Motion by Walter, second by Williams. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Walter? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Uh, before we go, Ms. Lexi, I'm sorry, I missed you. Did you have any awards tonight? <laughs> Did you have any awards tonight? I'm sorry, I forgot to recognize. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, approval of the minutes from the June regular meeting of the June 3rd, 2014. So moved. Motion by Denning, second by Williams. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. We reserve a time at our meetings for public comments. If there's anyone that has a uh, comment about an item not on tonight's agenda, this would be that time. <coughs> Seeing no one, we'll move on to the second reading of Ordinance BG 2014-14. Ordinance adopting annual city budget. Ordinance adopting the City of Bowling Green, <coughs> Kentucky annual operating budget for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2014 and ending June 30th, 2015, by estimating revenues and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. So moved. Second. Motion by Walter, second by Williams. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Walter? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance BG 2014-15. Ordinance relating to classification pay schedules. Ordinance amending the classification pay schedules G for general classified, S for protective sworn, D for department head management, and U for unclassified part-time employees, and authorizing pay increases for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Denning, second by Williams. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance BG 2014-16. Ordinance annexing property by consent. Ordinance annexing 0.52 acre of property located at 2111 Morgantown Road with property presently owned by Stonehenge Corporation and said territory being contiguous to existing city limits. So moved. Second. Motion by Denning, second by Waltrip. Is there any further discussion on the second reading? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-116. Municipal Order approving the promotion of Maureena M. Hillard and the probationary appointment of Kevin M. Turner to the position of Code Enforcement Inspector in the Neighborhood and Community Services Department. So moved. Second. Motion by everybody. Second <laughs> by... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. DeFebo. We had some turnover in the code enforcement uh, division of neighborhood and community services. We went out to public advertisement from that. Uh, we're here tonight to recommend uh, Mo Hilliard and Kevin Turner to the position of uh, code enforcement inspectors. Uh, their relative resume and applications are in your packet. Uh, I believe uh, Mo is here. Mo is here. That means you get to stand up and we get the camera around to you and we recognize you. Congratulations. You well deserved. We look forward to it. Any comments or discussion? 
Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? <coughs> <laughs> yes. Wilkerson? Yes. <laughs> Thanks again. You're, you're welcome to leave if you don't want to stick around. All right, Municipal Order 2014-117. Municipal Order authorizing the continuation of an agreement with Humana Health Plan Incorporated related to managed health care and claims administration services for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Walter, second by Williams. Mr. DeFebo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the Commission knows, we are self-insured uh, for health insurance. Uh, we use a third-party administrator uh, to help us manage our health program. Um, we're here tonight to ask the continuation of an agreement with Health, uh, Humana Health Plan. Uh, our health consultant, Mark Morgan, helped us to extract some value through negotiations, and we feel comfortable uh, based on those negotiations and our uh, discussions with Humana that they uh, should have earned the right to have another year of the contract. Uh, Mike Grubbs is here if you have any questions about this particular uh, Miss Order. Any questions or comments? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-118. Municipal Order authorizing the continuation of an agreement with Cheryl Morgan for health care consultant services for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. second. Motion Third. by Waltrip. Second by Denning. No, Williams. Williams, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Fibber. Uh As I mentioned, uh, we're self-insured for, uh, for health care, and it requires us to be innovative to constantly uh, look at ways to save money. Uh, an agency, Shill Morgan of Covington, has helped us over the past couple of years extract savings. Uh, they've offered in the past a uh, five-year no-increase contract, and as proof of their services, they uh, just saved us ten grand with Humana and are currently helping us with the clinic that could possibility uh, could be a possibility for the city. Uh, both myself and the health committee recommend uh, another year uh, with Cheryl Morgan. Comments or questions? Appreciate the work that you've worked with them. They saved us a ton of money. Thank you. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-119. Municipal Order authorizing insurance premium payments to the Kentucky League of Cities Insurance Services for insurance coverages of general liability, public officials liability, law enforcement liability, automobile liability, and fiscal damage, property, and workers' compensation for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Motion by Williams, second by Walter. Mr. DeFibo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 7 and 8 are in the same family of action involving uh, the Commission's approval of our relationship uh, for insurance with the Kentucky League of, of Cities. The first is for general city government. The second, and this water, uh, item number 8, involves the convention center. Uh, we recommend a continuation of both of these, and I believe that the convention center acted earlier. Just as an aside, it's important to realize that uh, the city of Bowling Green does a good job managing insurances. Uh, for example, uh, we are told by Kentucky League of Cities that we, the city of Bowling Green, have the lowest experience mod for workers' comp of any of its clients in the state of Kentucky. That just doesn't happen by luck or by um, whim, but by the efforts of uh, the employees, department heads, and particularly David Weisbrot. So I just wanted to acknowledge the, their efforts, in the, and Michael Grubbs, obviously, in his leadership. We recommend approval of both seven and eight items tonight. Thank you, sir. Questions or comments on the next two items? Hearing none, please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-120. Municipal Order authorizing insurance premium payments to the Kentucky League of Cities Insurance Services for insurance coverages of general liability, public officials errors and omissions, buildings and property, and business automobile for the Convention Center Corporation for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Williams and second by Denning. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-121.
Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2014-30 for transit services and approving a contract with Community Action of Southern Kentucky Incorporated of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $1,463,861. So moved. Second. Motion by Walter and second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Community Action of Southern Kentucky is our agent for uh, managing uh, the transit system here in Bowling Green. Uh, at, this year we went out to bid as required uh, to ask if anyone else wanted to do it. Uh, no one else wanted to do it and we're happy to report that the community action wanted to do it <laughs> and do it for less money. So uh, we are happy we have an experienced partner who's willing to do it for slightly less money. I think Cheryl Allen's here if you want to hear her spout, spout forth on anything, but she's here. Any comments or questions? No? <laughs> We haven't decided on how we're spending the extra money yet on the service, uh, I understand, but you're going to make a recommendation to us, is that correct? On the 80000 Just On the yes. extra 80000 Just say yes. <laughs> I, know, I know you're having a hard time hearing me tonight, but let, let me say something. I understand, no problem. But I want to make sure that, that you hear something that I think that uh, I can speak unanimously, not just from this board, but from everyone in the room. We appreciate the leadership that you've made at Community Action over the last several years. You have really worked with that organization to meet the needs throughout our community and throughout this region. And we respect the leadership that you have and, and thank you for all the time and hours that you put into to dealing with everybody involved. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any further comments or questions? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-122. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting negotiations after sealed bidding for bid number 2014-34 for fiscal year 2014 street overlay from Scotty's Contracting and Stone LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in an amount not to exceed $900,000. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip and second by Williams. Mr. Febo. This resolution ha has two elements. The first element is the actual bid. We went out uh, to bid for paving services and materials. We only received one bid. Jeff and others uh, negotiated with uh, Scotty's because it was over our budget and through a, a series of compromise by both parties, we're able to uh, bring it in for the amount that we had budgeted as well as adding a reserve. It might be appropriate if, if Jeff would come up and talk about briefly or however long you want about the overlay list for the coming year. Jeff? Jeff, you, you were, um, if you could provide just a very brief, just a, a summary of what you told the Bent Tree neighborhood last night as to how you decide the Certainly. list of streets. Certainly. And uh, uh, that's a question we uh, commonly get. How, how do we select streets uh, that uh, we are going to recommend to overlay? And, uh, there was some science behind that, and um, uh, what I, I guess the best way I could say this is, is we're looking at the condition of the pavement, and we're looking at deterioration of the pavement and what types of cracks, rutting, and, and all that that uh, is in place. Uh, that tells us some about the structure of the pavement. Uh, we have some pretty high-tech measuring uh, contractors that come in and, and look at each street and the condition of the street and uh, in fact last week we had this company in and uh, it's a band with lasers and all that kind of stuff and that, that measures the condition of the street. Uh, from those conditions uh, we determine a, a overall condition or a score of that section and, and we've set a minimum threshold and when a street uh, gets to that minimum threshold it's considered in need. Uh, we have a backlog of in-need streets. So that puts, um, um, you know, we, we got to have a means to make a, a good decision and bring to you guys. And the pr prioritization that we use looks at the condition, the ride comfort, and also the amount of traffic that's on a street. So uh, that's some of the calculus that, that goes into making the recommendation to you guys. Uh, I, I know in the budget we are looking at adding more uh, pavement money and uh, that, that will greatly help us. Uh, we have 278 miles of streets and at 900,000, uh, it, it takes a while to get around to each street on average. And again, that, that 
makes us have to really uh, look at these streets and, and which one we're selecting to, to bring to you. And the, the average, I don't know how to ask this because I didn't prepare you for the question, uh, the streets in Bowling Green need a threshold of, of like a score of 85 out of 100 and, and to be considered entirely adequate then it falls below like a 60 then it comes up to be selected? Yes sir, on, on average uh, based off our last survey we were about at 86 so just think about testing uh, 0 to 100 uh, we're up, up on a higher end and again that's on average taking every street across the the entire city. Uh, we consider just a residential neighborhood street in need if it falls below a 67. So once it meets that threshold, uh, it competes with the others. And like I said, there is a backlog uh, for those streets that are considered in need. So the, the money that we're authorizing tonight will pave how, how much length of street? With the additional funding, um, additional 138,000, that will add a, about another mile. And uh, uh, we, we think we can get pretty well down this list of streets. Uh, we have provided the standard or the initial overlay list, which was in the bid. Uh, we've also submitted a uh, supplemental list uh, that adds several more street segments onto this year's contract. Will we be posting this list on the website, Mr. Febo, so that yes, we'll the make that. people awesome. will know what, what's upcoming? Sure. I think that's a, that's a wise decision. A lot, of, a lot of citizens ask where they may fall on this list, mm -hmm. and if we could post that on the website and keep right. it updated, that right. would be great. And, and we, we'll be glad to do that, and these are the streets that are recommended in this contract. So make sure we're saying the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes. What are the names of the streets that uh, are going to be added? And uh, is Raglan Street uh, one of the streets that we had uh, talked about some time back? Um, I see on the first page that the street to be paved, Graham, beginning Cross Street would be Raglan Way. And I see another one up here, Jenkins, and the ending cross street would be Raglan. Yes, sir. Help me out on that. Okay, uh, Jenkins from Harlow to Raglan would be one that would be in this uh, base contract as, as well as Graham from Raglan to Conrad. Um, and when we're looking at these, we're, we're uh, taking this data and, and determining which ones meet that criteria. Uh, so, so the condition is going to weigh into this, also the amount of traffic on it. And um, can't tell you specifically on, on Raglan where, and I, I don't have all the streets in front of me, so I, oh, yeah. I can't tell you how I, that I'm, street scored. I'm certainly but, not uh, trying to put you on the spot, but I do have some concern, and I have expressed that concern in the past about Raglan Way. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a street, uh, you know, and I, I need to know more about the criteria, I guess, but this is a street that hasn't been paved in 42 years. Uh, I, I'm concerned as to uh, why it does not meet the criteria. And Joe, I'll be glad to get information, detailed information to you. Uh, but what I will say is when we do the condition surveys uh, we're going through and we're looking at these distresses and um, just because a street has certain distresses doesn't mean it it's going to make the score or the condition go um, down drastically. So uh, be glad to look up some detailed information and get back with you on that. Let me. I know you had asked me about Raglan, and I think we got a portion of it last year with the concrete rehab. Uh, maybe there's a segment that uh, we missed, because there were several segments along Jenkins, Raglan, Combs, and that area that I know we hit while we were over there. Was there a certain segment of Raglan that we did not hit last year? Because I know we uh, there was some concrete underneath with some capping of asphalt that we, we removed. I, my interest is in the part of Raglan between Combs and Webb. Combs and which? Combs Web. Avenue and okay. Webb Avenue. 
Raglan runs right into both. Let me check on that and I'll call you back tomorrow because I'm okay. not so sure. We are still in uh, the FY13 contract. So there's still a portion where we resume paving this spring that we have not worked through yet. And I did not bring that list with me to make sure that that's not on that list. And I meant okay. to check that for you, but I'll call you or email you tomorrow with that okay. answer. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we're paving about three and a half, just under three and a half miles of roads this year. Maybe, maybe up to four and a half, depending on how far it goes, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. So. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for the explanation. Yes, thank you. Uh, please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-123. Municipal order approving contracts through, co through cooperative purchase with various vendors under the Kentucky pricing contract for tires for the Public Works Department Fleet Division in the estimated amount of $88,500 for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. We wanted to uh, apply competition uh, as best we can to all our purchases that were in to reflect the law. Uh, we added to that this year the desire to make sure that we apply competition to the purchase of tires and to aggregate those. We spent about $88,000 a year. So we went to the state bid and found out that we can get a decent price for that. And what was nice about the state bid, a number of local vendors are on that list and could benefit from that. So uh, both Chris Crow and Jeff Lashley recommend that we do this and we concur and ask your approval. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Walter? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-124. Municipal Order approving appropriations for various city co created contract agencies for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Motion by Walter, second by Williams. Mr. Febo? Uh, tonight we have passed the budget and part of that budget reflects uh, people or agencies that we hired to do the work that we feel the city uh, needs to be done but done through a, a third party. Uh, those are known as contract agencies and in your packet is an order uh, allocating money to those various contract agencies. Uh, the amount is slightly down uh, from last year. Uh, I think it would be appropriate given some of the concerns of the Commission about uh, how these agencies are following the city's uh, policies. Uh, I think it would be appropriate for Gene to make a number of comments. Gene? Uh, I know one of the uh, issues that's been discussed in the past and, and brought up the last few days too dealt with the issue of, uh, uh, of bonuses and uh, I think it became maybe more of an issue with the recent uh, uh, audit of, of the Bluegrass ad by the State Auditor who picked up. Uh, that that bluegrass ad was paying, from I gather from newspaper articles, fairly significant bonuses to some of the employees there. Um, pursuant to Kentucky law, particularly Kentucky constitutional law, uh, it is um, invalid for public agencies to pay bonuses to, uh, to employees. Of course, this is applicable just to public entities, public agencies, and, and not to private entities. Uh, some of the entities that we contract with are private. Uh, probably, I'm guessing two-thirds of these are public entities that are going to be subject uh, to that prohibition that they're prohibited by law from paying bonuses to employees. Um, one of the questions that I think Katie asks in her agency application every year is do you pay bonuses and kind of give us a little bit of information about what they are. Uh, we've gone through that and um, the period, gosh, 50, 60 percent of them did in fact give some type of bonuses. Sometimes it's hard to tell from the information provided exactly what it was. Uh, one of them said they give Christmas gifts. Uh, they didn't classify it as a bonus, but said to give Christmas gifts, and they, probably nobody would object if you know they give a you know a ham or something for Christmas. But uh, some of the others are fairly significant. Uh, I saw one is a thousand dollars. One, I think, particularly one agency gave fairly significant bonuses either this past year's current year or, or the next upcoming year. Um, so I guess maybe just want to bring you that uh, that information to your attention. Um, I think the uh, the issue was, or at least one comment was that. You know, if we want to make this policy, we probably all make it applicable to all the agencies uh, that if they wish to participate in city funds, uh, that uh, they not use uh, uh, their funds or our funds to help pay bonuses to their employees, and particularly those, again, that are public entities because they're prohibited by law from doing that. 
a comment was somebody else. Um, in another agency on which I'm the board, we've been going over this Bluegrass Area Development District audit, and um, the state auditor was was very clear in his uh, indication that not only it was uh, unconstitutional for Kentucky public employees to be involved, but when there were federal monies involved, that generally grants prohibit uh, bonuses being paid. Uh, and he, he likened it to um, not spending all of your programmatic funds in order to save money for your own employees. And he, he, he felt that to be a conflict of interest in the, uh, in the approach. Um, so my recommendation would be that we pass the, the uh, allocations uh, and then in our contract that we would include a provision that, that bonuses would not uh, be awarded to their employees just like we don't for our own employees or other public employees. If I say that that language is not currently in the contract because we want to make sure what input mm -hmm. we got from the Board of Commissioners tonight, but uh, that'd be easy enough to, uh, to make that change and we get back to the mayor with a signature on them. Uh, like the, um, uh, the mayor did request I think a few weeks ago that we'd add one other clause kind of taking the clause out of our CDBG grants, we did add that language to these, uh, these as well too, about not using uh, our funds for uh, political patronage and lobbying. We put that language in these contracts this time as well. The, the, the bonus part of it, uh, uh, you know, if, if you didn't know, you didn't know, and, and we're not accusing anybody of doing anything wrong, but now we know. So exercising fiduciary responsibility, we're going to follow what the law says. We weren't giving them anyways, I understand. No, uh, right. I mean, city never yeah, has. Never has. But it's, it's my understanding, Gene, that you're saying not only can they not use the money we give them, they can't use their money. Public entities are prohibited by Kentucky Constitution. The Kentucky Constitution says that public employees cannot be provided bonuses. Uh, public employees have to be based to be paid based on actual work performed, um, and that's always a creative, you know, creative ways maybe to get to that point. Um, but the, but the cases from that and the Constitution is clear that public employees are prohibited uh, from getting uh, bonuses. Again, in the public entities can pay employees only for actual work. And so, so any of these agencies that we're helping to support with, with city funds uh, or, or taxpayer funds through the city cannot be paying bonuses to their employees. Well, this, this address is part of the public entities are already prohibited by law from doing it, so we'll put that in the agreement. Uh, the next issue, we have at least four or five of these entities that are not subject to that statutory prohibition, uh, but I think this board still has the opportunity to tell public, these other non-public entities who are mostly 501c3 corporations that if you choose to participate in city funding, then this is one of our conditions as well, that you also not provide bonuses to your employees. Because some of these entities are not going to be subject to that statutory provision. The, the question begs, why would we treat one grantee different than another? So if we treat them all the same, then... then I think, I think we're doing a fair thing. I do want to, you're talking about bonuses. The, the state auditor did indicate that a bonus is a bonus that no matter what you call it, whether it's a one-time salary adjustment or some euphemisms, a particular comment I'll read directly out of BG Ad staff indicated management referred to the bonuses as, quote, one-time salary adjustments, unquote, because they were aware that bonuses are not allowable costs for federal grants, so they, Bonus are just simply not permitted. So, yeah, I think in most of those situations, like I said, they didn't amend or didn't change the employee's pay. It was a one time payment. Uh, and then the very next week, they went back to the regular pay. I think if I remember right from the article from Bluegrass, was that they had 26 pay periods, but they actually had a 27th. They Payroll. added a pay period just to pay the bonus. Yeah. All right, so do we, do we need to take a vote on that, or you understand from the consensus what the uh, contract I think it might be nice be? to have a motion and a, a vote on us changing the contract to reflect that language, because this is something new. I think it would help to have that, yes. A motion, a second, and vote to have us change that. Would vote, that be vote a... Vote pieces of language that you suggested? Is yes. It? Would that be an amendment to this? Uh, I don't think it's going to be an amendment to this, because this is still... Uh, we're not changing the numbers That's here. That's what I was thinking, okay. But we're, I mean, they just probably have a good record. It might be nice to have a motion, a second, and a vote. Uh, on directing Katie and I to amend the uh, agreements to add that language. All right, so we'll finish with the vote on this and 
add that to the agenda or just go right into it? Just quit do it right now. It'd be fine. Just part of it. You're really not amending this municipal order because the numbers stay the same. But I guess you'd call it amendment, adding that language to the agreement. That makes sense. Do you, let's do you do understand it. what we're doing, Katie? Yeah. You, you do, get it down yeah. right. I make that motion. All right. Katie, let's do call it amendment this municipal order directing us to, um, uh, to amend the agreements to reflect the bonus language. Okay. So I have a motion, motion on the floor. I have a second. Second by Denning. Is there any further discussion? No, yeah. it. Yeah. Steve. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. Please step forward. Steve Hunter, Planning and Zoning. You're a public employee. I'm public employee, City County Planning Commission Director. But uh, ask Mr. Harmon here. Um, Planning Commission gives cost of living allocations. Several years we did not. What, what boat we're kind of in is kind of follow suit the city and the county. In fact, we get appropriations from both. And there's been years the city didn't give raises or the county didn't. So we always follow suit with one or the other. And uh, and this year's an interesting year because when we got our COLA information, it was 1.5 and some small change. But I, I think the city may be rounded up and the county's making up for one last year. So we're still on uh, the plan is to give a 1.5% COLA. So my question to Mr. Harmon is, uh, at a budget, if we were to give two percent, when the coal has been stated as one and a half, would that be would that constitute? That's not a bonus. That would that's been your pay plan, and that's budgeted as part of your pay plan. That's the actual compensation that you're paying your employees. And, and even though we might exceed what that rate is, we get from the, the Department for Local Government, that wouldn't be considered. And we're, we're sticking with one and a half. But it was interesting this year, if we put in our budget request, the city's slightly higher, and the county's doing right around three. Um, we kicked around the idea of maybe raising it to two for the employees. We don't need any extra money, but then we'd already put in a request for one and a half. I just wanted to clarify if we were to raise no, that to that, two. That's we actual would. budgeted compensation. Okay. Well, uh, we have pretty strict policy. Our personnel policies uh, don't allow planning commission employees to get any gifts of any value. Zero is the threshold. So we don't give any kind of gifts, nor can they receive any. But um, that was the other part of my question. That, so an employee getting, for example, a gift would constitute a bonus? Not from the employer, but from someone in the public. You know, they drop off a attempt to drop off a country ham, as you stated, to somebody. Would that be considered? I don't think that the, the statutory provision prohibits the, prohibits the public entity from giving from, from giving the bonuses. Uh, but don't forget, though, your employees. I'm sure they're not subject to our ethics code. But I think you've got your own ethics code. We do. And if you do, if you like us, we have a fifty dollars limit. We've got on, zero. No, we've got a fifty dollar for unsolicited. Sure. Um, but if somebody comes in and, for example, drops off a basket of fruit or something at Christmas time for the whole planning commission, sure. that's not it because that's just sure. Sure. divided among everybody. Yeah. But no, that's the, the prohibition involves a public entity, okay. not outside people. I appreciate that because again, that that is uh, we stick with the coals, but one share if we were to raise it to two percent, if that would be concerned. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? I'm sorry, Cheryl. I guess I'd like to ask a question to Cheryl Allen, Community Action. Um, we had just implemented, hasn't been, none has been awarded, but we had implemented a policy um, for, for, for performance reviews where a full-time regular employee who receives a majority exceptional rating would receive $150. Um, and then a hundred dollars for um, majority effective rating and so i guess i want to clarify we are a private nonprofit, um and i understand that we should not use city funds or federal funds to do this uh, but i guess i'm wondering um as i think through this very quickly we for one are in the situation if i'm understanding correctly of going back to our 250 employees and saying oops we just told you we were going to do this sorry we're not going to do it or saying no to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in running public transit is, this is that one, what i'm understanding is this a one-time payment and not added on to the continuing no it's a one-time one-time payment but based on that review it's one time. Uh, well, it's probably my belief that if you were a public entity subject to the state constitutional provision, the state would consider that to be a bonus for, for governmental employees because it's not based on actual work performed. 
Right. It's, a, it's a bonus payment based upon your review and your evaluation. So I think that would probably be classified under the Kentucky Constitution as a bonus. And, and so I'm, you know, even though we're a private, I'm asking if this will go into effect July 1 so that we have to either renege on what we promised our employees or turn down your money. I'm, so I think a lot of the other agencies may be in a similar situation. And um, I understand it's your prerogative. Um, so I just. I, I understand that makes it a difficult situation for you. Our, our situation is, is that, that I don't want to be the subject of the next state audit. And if, if it can be considered that we're using either state or federal money in behalf of well, you're getting federal money anyway, though. I don't think you can. Yes, but we have other funds as well, and we highlight on the agency's funding request how the funds will be used. And um, out of the our salaries for public transit will total, mm -hmm, excuse me, six hundred and thirty thousand dollars and we have allocated for next year a hundred and twenty three six ninety seven so what the city is paying uh, for salaries and wages even total expenditures is two hundred and forty six that's a very small amount of what we're paying our employees and so um, I guess I would ask that clearly you consider not using city funds for these because you cannot and or, that we not federal, use federal funds federal but funds. give us one year or something to figure this out for our employees the, our the salaries do they come out <clears throat> excuse me of a particular fund or is there a mixture of funds and you pay out of that. In other words, the federal funds you have coming in, the city funds you have coming in, and whatever other, where do, does the salaries come from? They come from different pots of funds, and we can allocate and charge it to a particular code where if we need it to go to um, other income, which would be from ads. Uh, what retirement system do y'all participate in? Pardon? What retirement system do y'all participate in? CERS, as do other private nonprofits. You're, you're a public employee, then you can't do it. We're not a public employee. You're a We're not. quasi public agency, which falls into that category. And that's the that's same, these are not county employees either, but the state auditor considers them to be public employees. So that you cannot constitutionally provide a bonus. I'm sorry. <laughs> we will seek clarification. Okay. I understand. Okay, thank you. But that's, that, that, well, I'm not picking that's on you. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this right yes, out sir, of Yes, sir, that that's thing. one person, one auditor's opinion on well, a see, particular is, agency, and we'll seek clarification. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna be the next subject okay, of this of the auditor, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> All right, any, any further comments or questions? We're just trying, I know everybody's trying to do the right thing and we'll, we'll work our way through it, thanks. All right, so we're voting on the uh, amendment to our contracts to include a prohibition on bonuses, yes. period. We've got a motion second on the amendment, so I need to vote on the amendment. Correct. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. And now vote on the action of this board as amended. And then unless there's any further discussion? So moved. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, I've already, got, I've already got a motion second on the, the original amendment, which is all the funding that we have here, so please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Uh, first reading of uh, Ordinance BG 2014-17. Ordinance relating to budget amendment, ordinance approving amendment number four to the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky annual operating budget for fiscal year 2014. 
So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Williams. Mr. Febo? Uh, the key to any budgeting is make sure you never spend more money than you have. And so we do this uh, through the process of, of a budget amendment in which uh, any changes to the budget are sunshined to the commission uh, for your approval. Uh, tonight we're here to ask your approval to the fourth change to the current budget. It might be appropriate, and it's also good news, I think, uh, some of these changes for Jeff to give a brief overview of, of, of this particular budget amendment. Jeff? This is the fourth and hopefully uh, final budget amendment for FY14. Uh, we picked up a few donations. Those are included. A couple of those are on the first page. Uh, but the bulk of this is the transfer of funds from the general fund from underspending as well as surplus revenues. We're, we're, we're transferring uh, roughly $1.1 million in underspending to various projects and approximately $2.2 million uh, we're transferring out from surplus revenues to various projects. Uh, this does not affect the 20% minimum reserve and the general fund will still be a uh, healthy plus 20% fund balance and in the general fund we're projecting even after these transfers. Uh, as you can see later on, uh, some of this money is going to pre-fund equipment replacement, uh, more money to pre-fund technology uh, items. Uh, we're putting uh, some money towards the Small House Road Improvement Fund, that project coming up. We are basically can canceling the borrowing we had projected for uh, the 800 radio system and moving uh, general fund cash over to cover the rest of that project at a, at a million dollar to, to finish that one off. And then we've got some other uh, transfers going into the municip municipal facilities fund and uh, increasing some uh, appropriations to finish out the year for fleet for some uh, necessary expenses for supplies and repairs. Uh, in that fund and then the last item there is the donation we received for the Covington Family Cemetery. But I'd be a, glad to answer any questions you have. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-125. Municipal order authorizing and approving agreement between the Convention Center Corporation and the City of Bowling Green relating to the sharing of tax increment financing funds. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Williams. One of the gems that we have in this community is uh, the Sloan Convention Center. <coughs> For the public, that, that is managed by the City Commission as, long, as well as the Judge Executive from Warren County and its principal uh, staff is, is Michael Grubbs, who quietly goes about managing the Convention Center with great success. Uh, that There's a current debt on, on the Convention Center that will expire in, in 219. And Michael came up with a creative way to not only help the convention center, but to also help recreation in the city. And I think it'd be appropriate for uh, Michael to come forward to present his idea to get your approval. Michael. Thank you, Mr. DeFebo. Uh, years before the Sloan Convention Center was built, the city and Warren County established the Heartland Tax District to finance construction of the building. Uh, the city puts in 80% of its tax revenues with the other 20% going to the Parks Development Fund. Uh, 20 years later, the Heartland District is, is no doubt producing more revenue than anyone expected, uh, far more than what we need to pay the debt, which is paid off, as the city manager said, in uh, fiscal year 2019. At the same time, the tax district will expire. Um, we prudently started setting aside money for capital in a capital reserve fund, and that fund has quite a bit of money available for future capital needs. So rather than continue to acquire funds, uh, the proposal is that we free up $300,000 a year for the next five years for parks development projects with the condition that once the tax district ends and the convention center is no longer guaranteed any tax revenues, that the city will restart, will start to repay those funds at the rate of $100,000 for 15 years, which will then guarantee the Convention Center continues to receive funding for capital. 
Uh, the Convention Center Board uh, reviewed this this afternoon and approved a resolution. Uh, you have a similar municipal order tonight and there would be an agreement between the two bodies where the city would agree to return the funds to the Convention Center over a period of time. Our budget this year is for the 300000 to be used to help pay for a soccer field on the West End. Um, again, the board approved it this afternoon, so we hope that you will do the same. Any other comments or questions? I'd just like to thank Mike for his creative thinking. I think that this is something that's going to benefit the, uh, the citizens now with some additional recreational opportunities and uh, guarantee revenue for the convention center going forward. So great job with this. Thank you. And again, to reiterate, this is an interesting process in that we are the, the board for the convention center and then we're, we're here and addressing the same thing, but it's needed because of our processes. And so again, you did a really good job on coming up with that. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, any other comments? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-126? Municipal Order authorizing a contract through sole source justification for maintenance services for radio and communication equipment with Motorola Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $41,469.60 for fiscal year 2015. So Second. Motion by Denning, second by Williams. Mr. Uh, we're moving great guns on the 800 megahertz radio system, and we should be uh, done, I think, by before the end of the year. But we still have to maintain our, our current system. Once the new system goes completely online, we'll have a warranty, and we won't need as immediate uh, maintenance, but we still have a period of time. So this is an interim uh, agreement to continue maintenance of, of our radio system until the a new system uh, comes online. Uh, Melissa is here, Carter is here, if you have any questions. Any comments or questions? Thank you, Melissa, for coming and sitting through the whole thing. I told her like, she didn't have to come. I mean, just for this. That's know. her dedication. I do like to remind everybody that, that the city of Bowling Green holds Motorola FM license number one and has since the very beginning. Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal, or yeah, uh, I lost it. First reading <coughs> of ordinance, BG 2014-18. Ordinance renaming street. Ordinance approving the renaming of Trey Court to Nell O'Brien Court. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip. Second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Um, this is a request from, I believe, a, a family slash developer to rename a uh, street in our community to what they feel is a more appropriate name. That name has been vetted to uh, our 9-11 folks. They have no objection. So thus, we have no objection in okay with it mr whitfield i know you're here representing the family do you have any comments to bring to us tonight no comments tonight. thank you for being here any other comments please call the roll waltrip yes williams yes denny yes wilkerson yes municipal order 2014-127 municipal order approving construction and accepting maintenance of overhauled subdivision spaces one and two so moved second Motion by Waltrip, second by Williams. Mr. Febo? Uh, when a subdivision uh, is completed, the developer requests to have the improvements that he or she has made and have that come into uh, the public domain. We're here tonight to ask your approval uh, based on inspection by our public works department to allow uh, overhaul subdivision phases one and two to come into the city's domain in which we will take care of uh, maintenance here going forward. Uh, Melissa Kanzler has handled this for our department uh, for the city. If you have any questions, any comments or questions, please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014 128. Municipal order approving the Small House Road Ridgecrest Way drainage improvements project and authorizing the city law department to negotiate the purchase of properties necessary for this project and to purchase properties required for the future widening of Small House Road and further authorizing the mayor to execute deeds, easements, and other documents related to property acquisitions necessary for both projects. So moved. Second. 
Motion by Williams, second by Denning. Commissioner one of this commission's priority has been uh, stormwater mitigation. Uh, one of the top priorities, priorities under this program for the coming year is the intersection of Small House Road with Ridgequest uh, and to develop the stormwater need there to uh, convey water uh, easily and more appropriately. Also at the same time, as the commission knows in the budget they just approved tonight, we're also going to look at widening Small House Road. So we want to combine the two and get on it and start getting the permanent easements on both projects and continue to move forward. Uh, Melissa's here again if you have any questions. Just want to clarify for the public, we're, we're doing Ridgecrest and Small House right away, right. but we're authorizing from Highland to Small House for the, the right of way acquisition. Is that correct? Uh, Highland, Highland to Campbell, I think. Campbell. I'm sorry, what did I say? Small, yeah, small House from, yeah. This right here is to authorize the property acquisition for the stormwater project at Ridgecrest and um, Ridgecrest and Small House Road. Now, in the process, we are making sure we get property in this vicinity in the event that our next step in widening is this intersection, which we're hopeful in the near future we will be at this intersection. Upcoming, we're just looking at Highland to Campbell Lane widening. Um, so that's not a part of this one? Not a part I of this. That. We're okay. not quite to that so point yet. This is simply the Ridgecrest Simply Ridgecrest, but I will say that we went ahead and we are proposing uh, the structures to be off the road far enough so if we do widen this intersection to account for some turn lanes these structures will not have to be removed and replaced in the future okay i misread it thank you okay. any other comments or questions please call the roll waltrip yes williams yes denny yes wilkerson yes and first reading of ordinance bg 2014-19 Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 0.92 acre from RS1A single family residential to OPC office and prof professional commercial located at 1623 Scottsville Road, presently owned by Tom and Portia Pennington. So moved. Second. Motion by Williams, a second by Walter, Mr. Febo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Steve Hunter is here uh, to entertain any questions the uh, Board of Commissioners may have concerning this uh, rezoning. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denny? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. That's the last item on our agenda. I'm sorry? We, we were thinking no vote, right? Uh, we coming, may have action coming out. May have action, okay. Yes. May have action coming out. Sorry, Laurel. <laughs> so we'll be going into closed session. Thank you for tuning in. All right, we'll return from uh, closed session to have one consider or one item to consider. I need a motion to add Municipal Order 2014-29 to the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Denning. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. And now for consideration of Municipal Order 2014-129, Ms. Shelley. Municipal Order approving an an addendum to agreement of purchase and sale with Owl's Head Alloys Incorporated related to the sale of approximately 67 acres of city-owned property in Butler County. So moved. Second. Motion by Denning and second by Waltrip. Mr. Febo, do you have any comments to make? Uh, he's just making some adjustments uh, over the litigation in Butler County, so please call the roll. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes, and that's the last item on our agenda. Thank you for tuning in.